Hi, we're going to talk about some best practices for family engagement. We'll give you some general tips and best practices and talk about a few things that you can do before meetings, during meetings, and after meetings to best foster family engagement. So taking a look at some general tips, let's look at some ongoing best practices and cultural considerations. Of course, maintain positive two-way communication, share good news, challenges, and of course, celebrate accomplishments. Ask the family for their preferred mode of communication and best contact information. Seek the family's preferred time for communication. They might have certain days that are better than others or certain time frames, if possible. Familiarize the family with processes in advance. See the Parent Resource Center on-demand modules on our website to learn more about the special education processes. Remind yourself and the parent or guardian that you are both equal partners in the education of their child. Convey that you consistently value the parent and guardian's input. Ensure that the family has your name and contact information. When thinking about cultural considerations, ask yourself if there are cultural differences that might present barriers to family engagement. Are there language differences that might prevent, present barriers to family engagement? What culturally competent practices can you employ? Ensure interpretation services are arranged in advance if needed. So what are some things that you can do before meetings to foster family engagement? When scheduling meetings, contact a family to schedule a meeting at a mutually convenient time. Upon contact, discuss the purpose of the meeting and share who will be present and advise the family on how to prepare for the meeting. Be sure to solicit family and student input prior to the meeting. This might look like helping parents craft parent or guardian narratives, taking a look at questionnaires, making sure that you understand family's priority concerns. And if there are private evaluations that were optionally completed, make sure that you get a hold of that in advance to review it. At least two days prior to the meeting, send information home so that families can consider material in advance. This includes draft, uh, IEP present levels and goals, and any eligibility components. When thinking about welcoming practices, create a welcoming and comfortable physical environment for the meeting. Prepare table tent placards with names and positions of staff or family members and other meeting attendees. Finally, mindset questions. Ask yourself, how can I support the family in sharing their knowledge and input about the child ahead of the meeting and during the meeting? How can I support the student in self-advocating during the meeting? And how can I involve the family and student in authentic collaborative decision-making? So now, during the meeting, what can you do to better engage families? We're going to take a look at communication, environment, and content during meetings. When looking at family engagement through environment, make sure that you arrange the team to enter the meeting space together with the family. It's much less intimidating. If it's possible to do, I'm sure it's certainly appreciated. If meetings are scheduled consecutively, have at least one team member escort the family to the meeting room. If you're not able to enter with the family, team members should stand and welcome the, to greet the families as they arrive. Ensure the team understands that families are equal members of the team. Do simple things like minimize physical barriers and utilize table tent placards with the names and titles of staff and other meeting attendees as well as the family. 
An example of minimizing physical barriers would be to sit beside family members rather than across from them. Family engagement through communication. Consider having one school-based point person for communication with a family. Ensure that all communication is in a language and at a literacy level accessible to the family. Be mindful of your nonverbal communication. Check for the family's understanding of key points made during the meeting. Ensure that meeting minutes are accurate and reflect team member thoughts, questions, and contribution. This includes the family. Eliminate professional jargon. Explain the meanings of the many acronyms that we use in education, as well as key terms. Explain terms parents might not be familiar with. Things such as pragmatic language, what a sensory break is, and different therapy tools. Ask the family for ideas directly. Rather than telling them, feel free to share, use a direct statement such as, what would you like us to know about your child? Use validating statements to connect with families and build relationships. Ask families, do you feel your questions were answered? And do you feel your perspective was heard? Remind the family that they can request an IEP meeting anytime at a mutually agreed upon date and time. Ensure family members are aware of any and all changes made to draft documents. Please project the draft you may be editing for the family in order for them to follow along in real time. Taking a look at content covered in meetings, make sure to use a meeting agenda. Always begin with student strengths and something positive. Keep the conversation student focused. Eliminate professional jargon and explain acronyms and key terms. Ensure families can follow along via live projection of a document as changes are being made. Acknowledge parent consent requirements. Provide family, the family with a copy of the newly developed IEP. Offer the family the option to take home the IEP to review in depth. They can sign it and return it after reading carefully, and they can follow up with any questions after reviewing. Inform families on steps to resolve disagreements if they arise. Maintain respectful and collaborative team dynamics. Last but not least, family engagement after meetings. Follow up with the family to thank them for their participation. Make sure that you respond to any questions that they might have. Remember and acknowledge families receive a great deal of information during meetings. Ask for the easiest and preferable way for communication. Provide information for the best way to contact the case carrier and relevant staff. Collaborate to build consistent approaches across settings and support home and school partnerships. When thinking about follow through after IEP meetings or IEP decisions, ask yourself, did the family receive a copy of the signed IEP? Are services delivered as outlined? Are accommodations being provided? Are arrangements made for provision of supplementary aids and services, meaning are materials prepped? Are staff trained or going to be trained in needed trainings? Ensure to monitor goals and collect data and report progress of goals to parents. Be sure to share good news, celebrate accomplishments, and of course, communicate regularly. Those are a few best practices and tips that you can do before meetings, during meetings, and after meetings in order to best engage families. Have a great school year.